Uh, hi, hi, Moinak. Um, we're having difficulty hearing you. I don't know whether you you could sit a bit closer to the microphone or. Yes, yes, yes. Um... Is it good now? Yeah, that's excellent. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. So should I start from scratch, from beginning? Yeah, if you start from the beginning would be great. Yeah. So hello everyone. I am Moina and I am one of the co-founders of a of a startup called Solinas Integrity, uh, where we are trying to bring robotics and AI for water and uh, sewer utility management. Uh, in this webinar, I will try to focus on the problems that Indian utilities are facing. Uh, water utilities specifically, the type of problems the Indian water network or sewer network have and how those are unique compared to uh, the, uh, the, 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 the pipeline networks that we have in Europe and or in, uh, in Northern America. And also I will try to talk about the technologies that have been implemented in different cities of India and how, how, how they are able to solve the problems, uh, where they are able to struggle to solve the problems. And also we'll try to talk about some the technology that we are implementing in various cities of India so that we can understand about how 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 the different type of uh, how different cities of India are facing different type of problems and how they are accepting different new technologies. So with that, uh, I don't know why my slides are not moving. So starting about Indian utilities specifically, uh, as we already know that India is, has already become a very world most populous country uh, and the population is growing at a very high pace and the and as a result, the water requirement and the water distribution, the availability of water for populations is also highly increasing at a very fast pace. The type of network that we have in India generally are very old and which are laid around some 100 years before. In some of the cities, it has been more than that. And when, due to the population explosion, uh, when this network gets overstretched uh, about uh, more than their potential, the, the problem happens. Moreover, uh, the, the, uh, the, type of, uh, the, the type of network that India has is also very unique. Uh, the, the, generally, the distribution network that is available in India, which is around 80% of the pipeline network, is around 100 mm to 300 mm in diameter. And that that's complicates the problem uh, because the, the type of technologies which are available for leak detection or conditional monitoring for these type of pipelines are not, are not fully suited for the type of network in India that we have, mainly because of uh, the reason is uh, the, the, the network that in India we have are not mostly mapped. People will not know where the pipeline network is. Uh, that is the, where the challenges comes in. And when we, uh, we, we, we when you see the impact of this problem specifically, uh, we see that uh, the, 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 the non-revenue percentage of water, that is the water that has been get lost while it get transported to the pipelines in uh, while it while it goes to the individual homes, around 50, 45 to 55 percent of water get lost in India. So that is the average uh, NRW percentage uh, drop in most of the Indian cities, but in some cases, the, the percentage of water loss can go up to 70 to 80 percent. In some cities, it is that high as that. And the main reason was the implementation of the technologies to manage this network has been at a very slow pace or has not been implemented. 
So just to give you an idea about how the, these distribution networks in India are maintained, both in sewer and water, uh, these are maintained very randomly, right? Like for example, if you have a leak, suspected leak in the pipeline, generally you will know like, okay, uh, first of all, there will be no reactive maintenance, no preventive maintenance, but there will be most of reactive maintenance which is done in India. So if you know that there is a leak or contamination point in a pipeline, which is within one kilometer network, generally it is done in a very random way where the utilities will randomly dig and try to see um, where the leak is or pinpoint the leak is. And that is the reason because of these leaks, uh, we, get, um, we get interrupted uh, water supply in India. And as because there has been a good amount of push by the Indian government to get 24 into 7 water supply, there has been a little bit of faster pace of technology adoption by different uh, municipal corporations and utilities which are present in India. And the technologies I, which are already uh, recommended by IWA or that, or that has been implemented in different parts of the world are generally classified into three to four categories, right? And when uh, when these utilities try to uh, get those get these technologies and get implemented in Indian cities, there has been some challenges uh, what they face and which sometimes may not solve the, 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 the problem that it is intended for. So if I talk about the technologies that has been implemented in India and which is very well known, I will not go in details about how the technology work and everything, but I will just tell you about how they has been implemented and why it has not been, it has facing some challenges on implementation in different Indian cities. The first one is the acoustic base, right? So they will be having acoustic loggers and they will be following the pipeline, trying to see without any doing non-destructive testing, try to see if there is any leakages in the pipeline or something like that. Uh, but what happens is in India, we already know the density of population is very high, right? So it's the world's most populous country and it's the seventh to eighth largest, uh, it's seventh largest country in the world. So density of population is very high. And when you want to use these technologies like acoustic based, we already know that we need to have uh, a very, very peaceful environment, right? Generally, it is done at nights when you have, uh, when you, the, the noise which are there from the environment can be minimal. Or what happens is if you were doing it in a time when you have some external noise also, you may get very false alarms, a lot of false alarms happens. So what happens is when uh, utilities in India try implementing it, there has been cases that, uh, most of the Indian cities, there has been cases where they have been, uh, where they have been uh, getting a lot of false alarms, and that is the reason they are also making a lot of random wrong digs in the pipelines to fix that. That is causing extra economic losses for them. The second uh, uh, technology that is used for specifically for leak detection or conventional assessment for this distribution network, starting from 100 mm to 300 mm, is the push camera. Is, it's a very cheap method that has been used by different utilities. What they will try to do is they will just cut a section of a pipe. They will just put this camera with this cable and try to see what is the what is the condition of the pipe. So if they replace it or not, or is there any leak? If they want to pinpoint the position of the leaks, they will try to put this and try to push it inside the pipeline and see where the where the accurate position of the leaks are. But what happens is if you use this uh, this technology specifically, is it's uh, one biggest challenge of that is the reliability of this because it does not have any. Uh, so it's a very long, it's a pure manual lever, right? So the the, uh, the the lifetime of this equipment generally comes down a lot. So you have to change this equipment every two three months if you are using using it very frequently for identifying leaks or doing some conditional assessment. Uh, other than that, the, the other big challenge is this does have a range of around. Uh, 20 to 30 meters generally uh, when you when you when you use this maximum from one access point in a pipeline if you have created maximum you will be able to go up to 6 to, to 70 meters that is very less so if you are if you have a network of imagine even a one kilometer if you want to inspect the amount of uh, intrusion that you have to make inside the pipeline is very high so that is one of the other bigger challenge that there the cities are facing uh, while implementing this uh, technology the other one is the normal visual inspection, which is a very primitive method, method where they will just try to make a cut in the pipeline, try to take out a small segment of the pipeline and see, uh, send it to lab and do some conditional assessment of that specific part or try to see manually by, by human eyes if there is any specific leaks in the pipeline. 
which is very very primitive and but it has been implemented in lot of indian cities as of now it has it is till now used in lot of indian cities the other one which i have not mentioned is the helium based one which is also been used in um, uh, some of one or two indian cities where for the uh, leak detection for this distribution network but one of the biggest challenge of using that is one of the cost the cost is really very high and for bigger cities uh, municipal corporation can afford that but for imagine for cities which have a very small municipal corporation uh, the the affordability becomes a little bit challenge for them for helium uh, for helium based technology leak detection the other part what i have realized when i have talked with the utilities and uh, municipal corporation was uh, for using helium based technology you need to have a very good understanding of the network right so you have to understand uh, where the where the pipeline is or the pipe is the, if, if the pipeline is mapped the the technology works much better but what indian cities have is most of the indian cities does not have the pipeline not map so they have no idea where the pipeline is it's more of a human memory somebody will know okay they may have a pipeline in this road or beside this place they have a pipeline uh, so that is one of the biggest challenge which is also uh, aking the implementation of uh, the helium based technology uh so keeping that in mind uh, we have been implementing this crawler based inspection both for water and sewer uh, pipelines both for uh, smaller dia pipelines and also bigger dia pipelines we have been implementing more than 10 indian cities but specifically i will try to talk about uh, uh, why 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 this crawler based inspection has been good um, has been able to add good amount of uh, values to the customer uh, the indian market uh, because specifically of two three reasons uh, uh, we have been able we have been able to implement technology specifically for this distribution pipelines right so starting from 100 mm to 200 or 300 mm so we have robots very small robots uh, which can go into this pipelines and do the visual inspection or conditional monitoring of this network other than that we have also bigger robots which can do bigger we have been, we are implementing bigger robots also which can do in uh, uh, leak detection and conditional monitoring of the bigger network but in this presentation i will try to focus on the smaller robots uh, specifically on this distribution part uh, the distribution pipelines part so what we have is we have these robots and these robots uh, i think this uh, i will not talk much about this uh, uh, this visual technology that you have because it has been already implemented in different countries uh, but the uniqueness of this specific technology is the how how the the the, the, the sizing of this product right so how it has been able to uh, packaged in a very small uh, robot and which can fit into a network of 100 mm to 200 mm so we have uh, robots which has cameras other than that we carry a lot of sensors also which can give help us to give us a uh, detailed understanding of the pipeline like we carry lasers uh, this carries lasers and also uh, extra sensors like imu which will help us to find out the uh, uh, inclination of the pipe other than that the 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 algorithms that we have which helps us to pinpoint the position of the leaks uh, if there is in in the pipeline uh, these data are then are uh, being sent to the cloud where we have this uh, ai based algorithms which are analyze which analyze this data and give a holistic idea about the position of the leaks or the condition of the pipeline network that we have but as i move forward i will explain in detail about the specific uh, product that i have uh, the, the the type of technology that we are implementing in uh, in india so as i said that uh, specifically in in, the, in, in india uh, 80% of the uh, distribution network are in the diameter of 100 to 200 and again within 100 and 200 majorly will be in 100 mm dia or 120 mm dia so that is the major density of the pipeline dia we have and as i already told you most of the uh, network, most of the utilities will not have um will not have any map or something like that to do uh, to implement any other technologies that we have so generally what happens is uh you need we need to have we 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 need to put in these robots to pinpoint the position of the leaks so these robots can go inside pipeline starting from 100 mm it can go from 90 mm also but from 100 mm to around 200 to 300 mm uh, where we have this um does visual based inspection plus it has array of sensors that i have talked about which help us to do a conditional assessment of the network so how does the uh, how this 
this technology has been implemented in india and how it has how it is being done uh, generally in india what happens is in the uh, in the uh, in the distribution network generally we face two main major problems we generally one problem is the leak detection the other problem is the doing the conditional assessment of the network so what happens is if you are working in the leak detection uh, specifically for leak detection what we do is uh, we uh, first of all if you are if, if you are deploying a robot in a particular city for specifically for leak detection generally we do it in a uh, reactive way so we do a reactive maintenance where if we have a uh, complaint about within a 1 km network you have uh, you have a suspected two or three contamination points and that is the reason they are not able to get a continuous water supply or very minimum water supply and lot of water get lost first we start off with understanding getting whatever data that we have about the network like if they have a gis pipeline map that is good enough or try to get extra data about uh, population density and also the topography and everything if if they do not have generally we first we build that data points use we use our gpr to uh, do a gis mapping of these pipes and then try to get extra data points get uh, integrated into the gis map and accordingly we try to do the pit planning because we have these robots one of the very unique case of these robots which i i i forgot to mention in the last slide was this robot can go up to 400 meters from access one access point it can travel up to 400 meters so the pit planning is very important when we are trying to insert the robot into this network so uh, we do a proper pit planning according to the uh, data that we get uh, from the uh, from the from the utility companies or the municipal corporation that are there, and after we have uh, got those data, we try to do the pit planning, and then the pits are planned. So generally, what happens is if you have a one kilometer network and you want to pinpoint a specific leak in that one kilometer network, generally one two pits would be good enough to complete this full um, assessment of that network. So we strategically plan those pits through our GIS map and through the uh, extra data that we have collected while we did our survey. And then those data are after this, uh, the robot does the analysis, do the visual inspection. We immediately send this, the data gets, uh, in the data within few hours get uploaded into the cloud dashboard where we not only provide the GIS map, we do the mapping for that pipe, uh, mapping for that pipe, but also give, uh, but also analyze the data that we have collected from the robot to give um, actionable intelligence to the customers. But uh, that is the one way of doing things. The other way for the conditional assessment specifically, uh, what we do is, uh, again, we follow the same pattern. Uh, we try to get as much of data that we have uh, from the uh, from the utility companies and the municipal corporations. If they do not have, we try to generate our own data in the first uh, few phases of our data collection. And we then try to just we then try to do the pit planning for that specifically so if you have a 10 kilometer 20 kilometer network and you have to do a conditional assessment for the network to take a decision okay which part of the pipeline need to be replaced or which part of the pipeline need to be um, need, need to be retained what we do is we try to the data that we collect which i talked about just a few seconds back then we try to distribute those according to this data we try to distribute those uh, pits over, around the network and then we try to do a sampling of that network for a particular uh, for that particular zone so for example generally we do 20 percent of the sampling so where we if you have if you want to do a condition assessment of a 100 kilometer network we generally do a 200 uh, sorry 20 kilometer of conditional assessment where we put our robots to inspection for 20 kilometer and from that we try to give an uh, understanding to the utilities okay, about okay this part of the network need to be returned and this part of the network can be replaced how we do that? One is uh, the, the 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 visual the, the laser data that we have from there. We try to take, get and uh, get data about what is the effective internal dial lift in the pipeline, uh, so that that data, other than the data about the C value of the pipeline, which is which can be calculated by the IMU which are present there, and then the, these two data are combined with the visual data. So what we do is we try to take the WRC coding into this specifically and we try to uh, for the, the network that we have inspected we try to do a defect coding specifically uh, where we try to combine all the sensors data and the visual data and try to give a specific uh, grading of the pipeline and give uh, 
give a final assessment for that and where we also try to include the risk rating also and that is for the, uh, for that we also try to use what is the risk rating processes that has been allocated by IWA or WRC. Uh, but what one of the biggest challenges that we face is like uh, the, the Indian network that if, if you see specifically the, the general Indian city is a comparatively very big right with the huge amount of population and a huge amount of population density. So generally what happens is in an average Indian city, we can have a network of 40 to 50,000. And the, this, the size of the city, the size of the population uh, requires multiple deployment of these robots. So for example, if you're working in a small city called Coimbatore, generally we have around five to six, we have to deploy at least five to six or 10 robots, which work 24 into seven for not only doing uh, leak detection, but also doing for conditional assessment. So for that, it's very important that uh, we find out right KPIs uh, for the utility companies trying to understand how many types of defects, what are the different type of defects that we get, we are getting most, uh, which are, which are, which are uh, what are the density of the maximum, what is the maximum density of the defects? Like, is it a type of a fatal problem that is creating the water loss? Or it is a problem of the, generally it's the problem of the breakage of the some valve or some uh, joints. So that, uh, that right KPIs are really useful for the customers to uh, to uh, to focus their resources that they have in right uh, rehabilitation or right replacement. So through our through so with the, the data that is analyzed, we try to give them uh, right KPIs to understand uh, what type of defects generally aching their network specifically. Uh, generally, for example, to give an example, in some cities it will be the problem of uh, rupture in the pipelines or blockages in the pipeline which is causing the inter intermittent supply but in some cities some indian cities it will be a problem of theft i will talk about all these details in the in the case studies as i go forward uh, but the, the second biggest problem will be theft which happens in indian pipelines generally people will puncture the pipeline and try to see uh, try to steal water from there so that may be some of the cases so rival kp is very important for the utility companies to understand what pro what type of problem they are facing but as I was talking about the deployment of multiple robots, it's also very important that uh, the proper proper management of those robots are properly done. Because when uh, we are working in multiple cities of India, what we what we see is uh, specifically in government utilities, there has been a proper mismanagement on the planning of the inspection also, which sometimes delays the inspection a lot of times, getting clearance pro properly planning the inspection, uh, which which delays uh, which delays a lot of the inspection and in some cases what happens is what we saw is there has been a uh, there has been a contamination point or a leak point in a pipeline which has been detected but because of the processes which are involved there it took them more than 10 days to resolve it so to do the proper uh, to streamline the process of inspection in the pipelines or democratizing the process of inspection in pipelines we have we generally try to uh, do a project management an inspection management type of thing where the the cities generally can plan the inspection. The areas in the cities can properly plan their inspection according to the availability of the robot that they have, and uh, which can make the process much more efficient. And the the leak detection or the contamination point detection can happen in the minimum time. Uh, I will now try to talk about the case studies. Specifically, the case studies are generally uh, really interesting because. As I said, India is a varied country, and the type of problems that we see in India are very, 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 uh, very, very different. Uh, generally, uh, the cities that southern cities are facing different problems, and northern cities are facing different type of problems in their distribution network. So, generally, we have implemented this Indo 90 or this small robot for conditional assessment and also for leak detection. Specifically, in Chennai, we are doing the leak detection part where we. Uh, face majorly two three problems generally one is what happens is uh, in chennai what happens uh, the, the, the the there has been a good amount of population explosion happening in chennai and that is the reason there has been a deployment of a lot of new water network which has been established so what happens as the new network get established most of the network are placed at a very high risk zones just beside the sewer line they will be placing it so what and as the sewer lines are very old there has been a high possibilities and high cases of cross contamination in the pipelines between sewer lines and between the water lines. I can you can see the picture of that one of the pictures where you can see within the water pipelines you can see a cross contamination happening from a sewer line. 
so that is one of the biggest challenge that the uh, the uh, the chennai metro water has been facing uh, to, uh, facing to um, facing to resolve and it's very important that we are able to pinpoint those locations and resolve that for time being uh, so the robots have been able to pinpoint those locations specifically where the cross contamination is happening which is creating a big health hazard for the uh, for the citizens of chennai specifically the other biggest problem is again as we already know uh, the the india is a developing country which is going growing at a fast pace uh, there has been also a growth in the uh, the, the telecom network uh, and as the telecom network has been de deployed all around India, the 4G network has been deployed all around India. There has been a deployment a lot of uh, this uh, these cables. And what happens is when this cable uh, these cable companies deploy these cables, they generally puncture. Sometimes they uh, use very heavy equipments, and that is the reason they sometimes puncture these water pipelines through, through where there has been the loss. There loss of water losses happen. So it's very important that we are if we. We try to pinpoint those places where those leaks are happened, uh, where, where those punctures are happened. And uh, we have been able to find out a lot of places uh, where we have found out this puncture uh, through the pipeline. So these are one of the images you can see in this image. There was one puncture in the pipeline from where the water loss has been happening. The other major problem is that specifically uh, the, the Chennai Metro Water has been facing is the, the network, which are very old. right? Uh, they do up which has been laid some 60, 70, 80 years. And you can see some of the pictures here. The pipeline is fully encrusted. Uh, encrusted means it has it has got a huge amount of salt deposit for a period of 70, 80 or 100 years. And there is no way to find out uh, for them to understand how much percentage of the network or how much percentage of the pipeline has this high amount of encrustations. So we have been using this robot to see uh, how much percentage of the network has been interested and which how much of the how much is the effective diameter left in the pipelines to do a proper uh, distribution of the water in the particular locality and this, through these robots we are able to find out uh, what is the effective internal diameter of the pipelines and according to, accordingly they are able to find out which part of the pipeline they should replace and which of the pipeline they should retain and the fourth which is the another big problem that chennai is facing is the is the problem of blockages. Uh, majorly, the inter another one of the major reasons why intermittent supply happened in India is because of the blockages in the pipeline. Nobody have any idea how these bottles or uh, napkins or those things come into the water network, but they sometimes get into the water network and blocks fully blocks the pathway of the pipelines. And when you have the pathway of the uh, pathway of this water, generally it creates a huge pressure difference and that creates a lot of rupture in the pipelines and breakages in the pipelines. So it's the, the other application that the robot has been utilizing is the finding out the potential blockages, where the blockages are and pinpointing those blockages to the right, pin, right actionable rehabilitation system can be implemented on those specific points rather than making any changes in the overall network. So uh, the second case study I will be talking is about the Coimbatore, uh, specifically it's another one city in southern part of India, uh, where uh, the, the, the problem is again in the distribution lines uh, and the diameter was around 100 to 100 mm and where they have uh, implemented uh, acoustics technology to pinpoint the position of leaks, but it was not very fruitful. Because of the because of the false alarms that it has been creating, and the the the, the problem this uh, uh, implementation of the beginning implementation of the uh, acoustics method was it only helped you to find out the leaks in the pipeline, right? But what about the uh, the blockages in the pipeline, or what about the what is the internal condition of the pipeline? They wanted to do more about that. And one of the major problems that uh, Coimbatore was facing was other than the blockages that they have. There was even the cases of lot of root uh, root penetration. That was one of the major cases. What we see when when we were doing inspection in Coimbatore, 
there has been because uh, the network also is very old some around 60 to 70 uh, 60 years 60 to 70 years old there has been a cases major cases where the route has come into inside the water drinking pipelines and it has completely blocked it uh, by and most of the networks are not again mapped so uh, using any other technology was not very helpful for them to implement and this was a network which has been uh, managed by suez so we have been utilizing this robot to pinpoint those places of blockages uh, specifically, but also uh, for inspecting the joints because there has been also cases where you can see in this image there has been a case, cases of breakage in the uh, or the rupture of the joints that has been uh, that has been used to connect those pipelines. This is just a 10 year old pipeline. There has been where there has been a rupture in the joint and there has been a lot of water loss losing and there was this, there is a specific locality which were which they were not able to get water for more than two weeks and the 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 utility or the uh, the the responsible person was clueless about why it is happening and they're not able to pinpoint the position about why uh, which specific space or specific zone in the pipeline is having that uh, problem and again the end entity was very helpful in pinpointing those position about where these specific ruptures have happened and uh, telling how the how um, and also helped, helped us to find out the extra blockages which are also there which the utility or the uh, the 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 right the chief engineers of that zone are unaware about so they thought that in the beginning it was just a problem in the rupture of the joints but they're not able to find out which joint which has got ruptured but they were very amused or very they were they were very shocked to know that there has been also cases of blockages which was also affecting the flow of the network. Uh, the the other case studies I will be talking is about this Trivandrum. Uh, it's uh, it's a state in Kerala where they have this problem. Uh, in in the uh, the Trivandrum, the problem is a little bit different. Uh, compared to Chennai and Bembatu. Here the problem is more about uh, fenules specifically and also the problem about these uh, blockages created by uh, the um, unwanted substances. They really wanted to know, again, it was as because, as I said in the beginning, that there has been a good amount of push by the government to make 24 into 7 water supply. But if you only if you were only able to make 24 into 7 water supply, if you really know what's your condition of your network, and what is the current problems which is aching your network? So in Trivandrum, the thing which was aching their network was specifically this unwanted blockages, which is which has been created by different bottles or different uh, napkins or a lot of things, stones and everything, uh, which gets which sometimes blocks this pipeline. But the other biggest problem that we see in Trivandrum, where is the problem of theft? There has been a lot of places where people have put in ferules to steal water from the pipelines. And that is the reason uh, which is contributing to a huge amount of NRW percentage in Jivandra. And government really wanted to know about where the ferules are and uh, pinpoint the position of the ferules so that they can not only resolve those places, but also maybe charge water tax for them where they are not able to find out uh, which are not logged or which are not minted or which are not accounted for. So again, uh, the robot was being used there specifically to understand the specific positions and specific uh, places where these payrolls have been implemented or the uh, blockages have been created specifically. Uh, I will talk about the another one city where we have in Bangalore, but this is not from a utility. This is from uh, specifically from a, from a private uh, housing society where there has been uh, there has been a uh, there, ha there has been a problem of losses of water in the pipeline. They have around five kilometers of network. Losses of uh, they have been a problem of losses, but they are not able to locate the problem. What's the problem in? Uh, and initially, there has there has been an implementation of um, acoustic space method in the beginning, where they got good amount of places where the problems has where the where the problems can be uh, where the leakages can be, but. When they did the digging and tried to do, try to do the rehabilitation, they realized that uh, those other places are perfectly okay and there has been no cases of leakages or blockages in those places. And then there was N290 or the robot that can go inside this 100 mm or 200 mm pipelines has been implemented. And what the thing we realized was the places where it has been said that 
uh, through acoustics method, it has been said that these are the places where you can have possible blockages or possible contamination points or possible leakages. Those places are perfectly okay, and those perfect those areas are have no problem as of now. You can see from the images only. This is perfectly uh, okay network. No actionable, uh, no actions needed to be done. So it was also a very good case study where we tried to understand the uh, the application of this type of robot specifically for. Uh, getting a visual condition of the pipelines when we are implementing this technology compared to the other technology where the acoustics are already been implemented. Uh, this is another one of the uh, case studies uh, specifically uh, where uh, it is in the western part of India where Ullasnagar. Again, this is the place, uh, the major problem is the water tip. There is nothing, no other problem other than water tip. You can see from the pictures also. The pipeline is generally from good, good condition. And it's again a pipeline network of around 100 mm to 200 mm in dia, majorly in 120 mm dia. But the problem is uh, the ferules or the theft that is happening that uh, that are not only accounted for, but also the, the way the theft has been done. It's also in a very, uh, it's very unique way. Generally, if you can see in the pipeline, they have fully punctured the pipeline. And generally, they have put an extra pipe which goes through the pipeline also. So again, government, there has been there has been some action items from the government to pinpoint this position of the leaks of uh, ferules and also uh, eliminate those ferules so that the proper water can be distributed. And if those ferules cannot be removed, maybe we, there can be a possibility to generate some water tax from those places. So in the six months of inspection that we have done in different places in Ullas Nagar, we have been able to find, find out more than 500 ferules. And the density of ferules in Ullas Nagar in India is so high that maybe within 100 to 100 meters, you will be able to find, find out some 50 to 60 ferules. Within five meters, there will be two, three ferules. And this density was much more higher in the places where the population density is very high. It's a city just beside of Mumbai where the population density is very high. And as because there has been a good amount of population expression happening in those suburbs of Mumbai, uh, and the, the water network has got first stretched where the water has not been able to provide. People have been, people are using different unethical or illegal ways to take water from those networks. Uh, the other one is from Hyderabad. Again, it's in the, uh, it's one of the southern cities of India, uh, specifically. Again, the problem there was more about a older network trying to understand what is the effective internal dia. So they, they can take an they informed decision about replacing the pipeline or retaining the pipeline. Uh, there has been, so they have, we have been using this robot to specifically understand what is the internal condition of this network. And when we have, when we have implemented this specific robots for this 100 mm to 200 mm dia, we realized that major problem was not the leakages in the pipelines or ferules or any rupture of the joint, but the major problem is the effect, decrease in the effective internal dia because of infestations. As the pipeline has been carrying water for last 80, 90 years, the effective internal dia has came down a lot. Just to give you an idea about there has been a network, the original dia of a pipeline of a network which, where we inspected and uh, we realized that the original dia was 200, but the effective dia currently after infestation has came down to 110 or 120, which has effectively, which has hugely affected the flow rate in the pipeline, resulting in less water getting transmitted to the household networks and generally affecting the overall performance or overall availability of water in that specific zone. So through these robots and through this inline inspection, we are able to find out which places of the network has to be replaced and which places of the network has a diameter which can be continued for next five to 10 years. Uh, the another one case study is from Bhubaneswar. Uh, uh, again, the problems if you see, again, it's very similar. Uh, there has been a major problem of blockages in, in this Eastern state where the pipeline has fully get blocked. So generally you can see there has been stone got accumulated in a particular network, in a particular place which the obstructs the flow of water and resulting in uh, resulting in increasing the pressure and back pressure also. So the Indo-90 was specifically used for specific, specifically finding out those blockages in these specific cities. Uh, but generally in the network, if we see in bonus for the network was generally in good condition, but somehow unwanted particles were getting into this network and block, uh, affecting, um, affecting the flow rate in these uh, pipelines. 
Now about a case study about a conditional assessment that we have done in specifically in Kempatu, uh, where we we have helped the utility like Swiss to understand about what is the which part of the network they they should retain and which part of the network they should, can they, they can uh, replace. So what happens is there was a problem like uh, the the city. The, the network that they have this uh, around two kilometer or three kilometer network which they have in a particular highly dense population there has been a push by government to replace that network generally um, with obviously there has been obvious reasons for that but Swiss really wanted to make a informed decision about okay uh, there should be some effective way to find out should they replace the distribution network or should they return the distribution network and again as I have told you in the beginning part how we do the conditional assessment we did around 400 to 500 meters of inspection for that uh, specific uh, three to four kilometer of network. And from those three to 400 meters, 400 meters of inspection, we are able to extrapolate the data to make a complete decision about should they replace or should they return. And at the end, they are able to return that network as they are able to give actionable intelligence to the to the uh, to the government regarding uh, the condition of the pipe. So what we did was we used uh, laser profilers to find out the effective internal dia. We use the uh, IMUs to find out the, the effective C value of the pipeline and also use different effect coding to find out the overall scoring of the pipe. And on basis of that, we came into a conclusion that this part of the network can be written and maybe for the next five to 10 years, this can be used for pipeline uh, for distribution. And from that, they're able to uh, save that around four to five kilometer network was written. Uh, because of the implementation of specifically of this um, this technology, uh, about the 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 impact that we are making the, with this technology, I will specifically tell about how it is saving uh, specifically uh, how it is saving the not only water obviously through reactive and proactive inspection of those pipelines we are not only saving water but there has been adding a lot of value for the for the utilities and the municipal corporation specifically. Generally, what happens is, as I said, like when utility companies were not able to find out solution, which uh, for the pipeline network, after they have implemented different technologies like helium, acoustic based, or uh, through uh, visual inspection, uh, generally they do random digging in the beginning part, right? As I said, uh, so the, as so, for example, when when we analyze the data that we have seen, is before to pinpoint one specific leaks, they gen generally used to make some. 20 to 30 digs on an average around 10, but in some cases it can go to up to 30 digs to pinpoint one uh, specific uh, contamination point or the leakage point, and it would have taken them a week to first pinpoint those places where they have a leak. But now, after this implementation of this robot, the thing what happens with the robot and the analytics platform that we have, we are able to pinpoint position of the leaks and also the, also able to do a conditional assessment of the particular segment of the network within two hours. And the number of digs has come down to one or two specifically, uh, as because our the robot not only can go into the smaller network but also can cover a longer distance, right? It can cover around 400 meters. And again, when you make a less number of digs to pinpoint those locations or uh, to do a conditional assessment, uh, the, the 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 added cost behind it comes down, right? To like generally it comes down by around five times. Uh, the, the, the average cost of pinpointing a specific leak or doing a conditional assessment for a network, it used to cost four times, five times, six times more than whatever uh, after we have been using this robot to do this uh, conditional assessment or leak detection. Uh, other part specifically, as I talked in the beginning, uh, we have been using these robots to do a lot of inspection in different cities and we have been deploying lot of uh, number of robots right as i said the, the 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 network size of indian cities are very high uh, so you have to deploy some 10 20 15 robots and what happens is when you have a good amount of data generated from these robots it's very important that we are able to analyze the data as fast as possible so those so those problems which are detected can be resolved within few hours so for that, what happens is it's very important that we use AI for assessing those videos or those uh, sensor data that has been there to, to make to make the conditional assessment much more faster and detection much more faster. So what happened is we have developed an algorithm which can analyze those, uh, specifically the video data that we have, uh, which is generated by this robot specifically. 
and uh, the different type of defects that we have generally have seen uh, generally whatever we have seen in water pipeline specifically and again we have a different uh, data set for sewer lines uh, but for generally <clears throat> in uh, in water lines what we see is uh, the problem of infestations ferules joint displacement surface damage root blockage sludge accumulation in stone and we have a data set which has been trained with this type of images so that we can sort those defects and analyze those data as fast as possible and give right uh, right report to the customer as fast as possible so we have built that model where we have uh, trained those uh, trained our data set with the lot of data that we have generated with these robots and now the analysis of those uh, visual data and this sensor data are done by the ai algorithm that is the reason what happens is it has the, 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 the report generation time or the accessible the, the, the data that has been given to the customer that time has come down by at least five times so if you have some 10 robots deployed around different cities we are able to give that data about uh, the actionable data within that day within three to four hours of the inspection that has been done because of this model that we have generated uh, again uh, the the uh, i will just talk about which, uh, i just wanted to focus more about the water inspection but i will also talk about one slide specifically on the sewer inspection that we have that we do uh, with these robots specifically, but again, that will be separate uh, robot and separate architecture and separate design and separate uh, robustness for that. But again, uh, for industrial sewer or the normal sewer lines also, the general we face the same problem, right? The 80% of the network are in smaller dia between 100 to 200 mm, and there has been not much uh, uh, sewer robots also available in the market which can go into these very small pipelines and. Uh, these smaller robots are adding a big amount of value for that, uh, for those pipelines, sewer lines also in India and has been uh, adopted in different parts of India, different cities of India specifically. So this was a case study about uh, one of the one of the uh, network that we have done. So we, there was an it is around 18 kilometer of network, uh, which is owned by a particular, uh, particular uh, pharmaceutical company. And they wanted to inspect that uh, specific network within three days of the downtime that they have. So within the three days of the downtime that they have, and uh, it's a 20 kilometer old network with a 200 mm dia. Uh, but the thing is, if we are using uh, multiple robots, also it's very tough to analyze the data that has been generated by this five six robot that has been deployed to specifically this 18 kilometer network within three days. If you are doing any human or manual based analysis of the data, it's it's very tough. It's it will not be possible to do that. So what we did was we used again our AI-based algorithm that we have, where we have deployed three robots to inspect the pipelines, and then AI-based algorithm analyze the data within within that specific day, and we are able to inspect that 18 kilometer network within three days. So it's a good combination of uh, the robot and the software that we have, which not only helps us to do faster inspection of this distribution network in water lines and smaller dam, modern dam sewer network, uh, but also decrease the cost involved in this uh, maintaining and analyzing, maintaining and uh, inspecting this network. Uh, with the so from the from the type of uh, the type of uh, inspection that we have done in the last 1.5 years, so we have been implementing this technology in the last for the last 1.5 to two years, uh, where we have. Uh, as I said, has been deployed to deploy this uh, water robots for more than 10 Indian cities. And what we realized is like that the from an average for per kilometer of inspection that we are doing are able to around save around 600,000 liters of water because from that value only we can understand the amount of uh, the leaks or contamination points available in the network uh, for each and every kilometer. So what we realize for each and every uh, one kilometer of inspection, we have found more than 10 20 contamination points. We have a value somewhere around that 10 to 15, uh, 10 to 20. We get values around that for generally for each and every kilometer of uh, network we have inspected. Uh, but not only that, but the, from the point of view of the amount of money that also is saved by the utilities also around for each and every uh, kilometer of inspection they have, uh, we have done for this small distribution network, we have been able to uh, save around 10 lakh Indian rupees. Um, uh, that is huge amount of uh, huge amount of money involved when you are inspecting a huge network right uh, because if you have even uh, 
10,000 kilometer of network, which is the average size of Indian cities network, it's a huge amount when you when you extrapolate it to a bigger level. So yeah, uh, so that is about the amount of the social and the amount of water gets saved and amount of money is uh, money saved for using this technology specifically in India. So that's all about how we are using uh, our, what is all about, what are the problems that Indian cities are facing and uh, how we can, how we are using a different technology that is already different technology than which is available to maintain this network specifically for this India or in developing countries. Thank you. Thank you very much, Moinak. Uh, an interesting um, presentation. Uh, interesting to see what difficulties you you have in India in terms of managing your networks, not just for the NRW side of things, but just uh, managing the water networks in total. But I think non-revenue water is seen as quite an important issue by the different governments in India. Yes, uh, NRW is a, now a big headache for the Indian government, right? Uh, because to get 24 into 7 water supply, because Indian government want to get 24 into, 24 into 7 water supply in the next five years. And it can only be possible if you can bring down the NRW to at least below 20%. And that can be only achieved if you have a very good idea about what's, the net, what's your problem the network is facing and how we can manage the current network that we have so that we can resolve that as fast as possible and we can make it continuous supply. Mm. And I, I've seen recently that, in, especially in Delhi, they're using the gas detection. It seems a bit, I mean, if you've got empty pipes, you're going to use a lot of gas, aren't you? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so uh, ga gas detection has been seeing some implementation in, uh, in the Indian cities. But uh, the, again, the consumption, as I said, the, the, as you rightly said, that if it is an empty pipe, generally the, the consumption of the gas is very high and which increases the cost. So Delhi is a capital city of India. They can afford that specifically, but it cannot be implemented in cities, smaller Indian cities who cannot afford those technologies. That is one part. And the second part is, as I said in the beginning, to, do, to get a proper effective idea, effective leak detection in Indian network, you need uh, through, uh, through helium-based or gas-based system, you need to have a very good understanding of the network or you need to have proper network map so that you can find out, okay, which places the leaks are happening. But the major problem in Indian cities is that most of the network in Indian cities are not mapped. Specifically, the distribution pipeline are not mapped. People have no idea where the pipeline is or where, uh, where it is getting laid. It's most about human memory. Some engineer will be there who will have some human memory, okay. So some, it was some 20 years back, a pipeline was laid in this particular place. I know about that, but there is no documented way, but there is no GIS map, which sometimes obstructs the implementation of this gas-based technology or something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it seems that the robot technology is seems very good for detecting a lot of issues in terms of what assets you have underground, what's the yes. condition of those assets, looking for leaks, looking for illegal connections. It seems like um, an ideal um, option for India. Yes, 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 yes. And I uh, just I like, again, not only for, uh, that is that is something we realize that not only in India, this, again, most of the cities have the similar type of problem, but we realize that in the other developing countries in Africa or in deep Southeast Asia, uh, same is a very similar problem that they have, where though they have a little bit bigger network size, dia network, but uh, they have the problem of unmapped pipelines, no idea about the pipelines, and where they are also struggling to implement this gas-based technology or uh, the, the the electronic loggers or the acoustic loggers that they have. Yeah. And we've got one question from Ken, which is to do with um, C values of pipelines. <laughs> Um, because obviously, when you're building hydraulic models, you you actually need to understand the friction values of of different pipelines. Um, is this something you can do for your technology to actually understand what's causing friction head loss or head losses down your pipes? So, uh, if you if you see the C value, the formula that is required for calculating the C value, if I remember correctly, generally you need two three inputs, right? One is the flow rate, another was the inclination of the pipe, and uh, extra one more data point that is there. What happens is uh, through this robot, you can collect one of the data point. 
uh, specifically the inclination of the pipe the sensors which is there it can help you to find out the one specific data point which can help you to find out the c value of the pipe uh, that is one part the other part is uh, the c value of the pipe is also very dependent on the effective diameter which is left in the pipeline right so the, the, the sensors that we have can also help you to find out the effective internal dia which is left in the pipeline so we generally if uh, if i if i remember right some three to, if to calculate the proper c value of the network or a particular segment we need to have three to four values out of that two values like the finding out the internal dia of the pipe and finding out the inclination of the pipe can be done with the help of this robot right do you do you have a pressure sensor on your device that can measure water pressure uh we have not as of now we have not added that uh, pressure sensor which can do that but we are trying to make the robot autonomous so that we can travel much more further distance yeah as yeah. of the third right so yeah okay do you normally put the robot in an empty pipe or a pipe full of water so uh, it depends uh, for example if you have a valve if if the utility is able to detect the valve in a particular place we put it through uh, through that valve generally the robot is a waterproof so robot does not have a problem going inside water but generally what happens in some cases people do not have an idea also where the valve is they will only know the pipeline is they will in that case what happens is we try to stop the flow for at least in half an hour and an hour and make a cut to cut section in the pipe and then put the robot and do the inspection right okay and i I'm, I'm, i'm guessing because you have intermittent supply in a lot of areas it it's a lot easier to do the inspection during yes. the time yes. when the pipe is empty yes 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 yeah. i'm sure people won't be too happy about being disrupted <laughs> when yeah, so, the water so, is on yes that is one of the challenge uh, one of the challenge that we have in that but what happens is uh, we 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 try to we try to use this technology generally if they are not uh, now what happens i will like give you an example like for example in a particular area or a locality they are getting water supply for 3 to 4 days and for 3 days they are not getting Uh, mm-hmm. one way of doing it is yeah you have an interruption for one to one or two hours and resolve that problem permanently forever or mm-hmm. you have to make it continue forever so what happens when you when you think from that point of view you realize that okay there has been an acceptance for that okay uh, okay and that's that not be a problem we can have an interruption for two hours and whenever we do the inspection generally we try to do the inspection at night uh, so we try to uh, minimize the effect of uh, this one hour or two hour of interruption that we have we are creating yeah okay well thank you very much moinak that was a very interesting presentation and uh, and for everyone listening i'm sure they've enjoyed it thank you thank you everyone thank you for hosting me